Oh my god, this is so cool. Teacher, can you see me? Yeah, sure. Now it's dark. What happened to my camera? <laughs> Why it's dark? It's okay earlier. Teacher, what happened? I don't know. Earlier, it's okay. My lights are all on, teacher. What happened to my camera? Oh, wait. Wait. Oh, it's still dark. Lisa, can you ask some friends for help you? Wait, teacher, I will call teacher Aldrin. Maybe she, he know. Earlier, it's okay, right? During my P3 class? Yes. Why it's so dark? Teacher, I pray. Teacher, wait, we're fixing the camera. Ano, Auntie? Ayo na man. Teacher, I'm having a problem with my camera. Can you see me? Um <laughs> it's dark, right? I don't know what happened. Yes. Catherine will come to help you, right? Teacher Aldrin. Oh. Teacher Aldrin is busy. Oh my gosh. Where is Tisha Irish? I think she's still sleeping. <laughs> can we just start with this one? They cannot see me. Oh my god, I don't know what happened because earlier it's okay. During my P3 class, it's okay, right? Teacher, yes. can you hear me? Yes, yes, I, I can hear you. What happened? Oh my God, I'm so dark. 
You should try to share screen first. Share screen. Your PowerPoint. This one. Can you see it? Yes, it's screen? okay, Tisha, it's okay. It's okay even if I'm dark. You, you can continue teaching. <laughs> okay, good morning, everyone. I know you can see me. Yeah, my name is Teacher April. You, do you know me? No. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm having, I'm having a problem with my camera at the moment. I can't fix it. Maybe we can just start. Can you hear me clearly? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, Hello. Teacher John. Okay, you listen to me. Teacher John is sent here at the moment. He's busy fixing something. I'm going. I'll be the one who will teach you for today's lesson. And she to and he told me that you already talk about this topic. Is it right? Is it correct? You already talk about this topic. We just need to review and play a game in Word Wall or later. Am I correct? Yes or yes? Yes. Yes, okay. Now for today's lesson, we're going to talk about the separation techniques. Do you talk, did you talk about this one yesterday or in your previous meeting? Did you already talk about this one? Someone answer me, please. Yes. Okay, separation techniques. How do we say now? Let's define define what separate what separation first. What is separation? What is separation? Do you have any idea what's the meaning of separation? Okay, separation is the action or state of moving or being moved apart. That's the meaning of separation. It's being moved apart, okay? Now we have here, how do we separate mixtures? Let's read. Can you read with teacher to choose a suitable separation method? Read. To choose. To choose, to choose a suitable separation method, we need to, we need to consider properties of sub substance in the mixture. Properties of substances in the mixture. Okay, very good. Now we have here. What is a mixture? Do you have any idea what is a mixture? Or can you give me an example of a mixture? Can you give me an example of a mixture? Okay. Water and oil. Huh? Water and oil. Water and what? Oil. Oh, very good. Now it says here that a mixture is a substance made by mixing other substances together. As Bonya Chai said, water and oil. What else aside from that one? How about when we mix powder juice and water? Is that an example of a mixture? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. How about salt and water? Is that an example of a mixture? Salt and water, when we mix it together. Of course, it is an example of a mixture. Now we have here the separation of solids and solid to solid. Again, separation means is the action or state of moving or being moved apart. We have here, can you please read this one? We use sieve, come on. We use sieve to separate the particle from the particles. Okay, it says here that we use sieve to separate large flour particles from fine flour particles. This is the sieve. Can you see the picture? This is a sieve. Do you usually do this one when you're separating large flour particles? Do you have this at home? Yes. Yes, okay. Yes. That material is called as sieve. Everyone, can you please say sieve? Sieve. Yes. Okay, again, sieve is used to separate large flour particles from the fine flour particles. Next one we have here. Oh, wait a second. 
What's this? Where can you see this material more often? Where can you see this material? Do you have any idea about this? What is this? This is a what? Sifting. Sifter. That's a sifter. Now it says here that sifting gravel separates it into different sizes. We use this one to separate gravel, just like, for example, when you want to separate uh, sand and small rocks, we use this one, sifter. Can you say sifter? Sifter. You can usually see this one in construction sites, right? Okay, next one we have here. Uh, can you please read this one? Can someone read? In the junkyard, electromagnet are used to clean up scrap metal for metal Okay, it says here that in the junkyard, electromagnets are used to pick up scrap metals for recycling. Now, what is an electromagnet? This one is the electromagnet. What can you notice about electromagnet? Is it big or small or is it like a common magnet that you usually see? What? Do you think it's heavy or what? Oh, I think it's heavy. Okay. okay. Yes, this is big and heavy. They use it in the junk in a junkyard to pick up scrap metal. These are the scrap metal that can be used for recycling. Okay. Again, this is a electromagnet. Can you say electromagnet? Electromagnet. Only Bunya Chai is answering me. How about the others? Are you even listening? Okay, next one we have here. Magnetic separation is used to extract metal from ores. Metal ores are ground into powder. The powdered ore is placed onto a belt, which carries fast magnetic rollers. Now, do you have any idea what an ore is? What is an ore? What is an ore? What is an ore? Do you know what an ore is? <laughs> okay. Ore is a rock, a rock that contains natural mineral, okay? Ore is a rock or stone that contains natural mineral, okay? Yes, what is an ore again? Oh, what is a rock? Okay, ore is a what? Ore is a what? Oh. Is a rock that contains natural mineral. Now let's proceed to this one, separating insoluble solid from a liquid. When we say insoluble, what does it mean? What does it mean by insoluble solid? Do you know? Do you have any idea what is an, an insoluble solid? Yes or no? What is an insoluble solid? Did teacher John mentioned about this one? Bunya Chai? What is an insoluble solid? Huh? I, I cannot hear. I can speak. What is an insoluble solid? When we say insoluble solid, what does it mean? Any ideas? Any ideas? No? <laughs> okay, let me define what an insoluble solid is. When we say insoluble solid, it does not dissolve into water. Can you repeat it for me? Insoluble solid does not dissolve into water. Come on, turn on your microphone and say it with teacher. Insoluble solid does not dissolve in water. 
Go. Soluble solid doesn't dissolve in water. Yes, they does not dissolve in water. Meaning to say, when you put them in water, they are still the same. They will just get wet, but they will not break into pieces or, or they will not melt. Okay? That's the meaning of insoluble solid. Now, do you have any ideas in your mind? Do you have any examples of insoluble solid in your mind? No? Okay, you listen to me. Some examples of insoluble solids are sand, wood, metal, plastics, oil, and this one, rice. Why? Why are they considered as an example of insoluble solid? Because they, they will not dissolve into water. When you put them in water, they will not break or they will not melt. Understand? Yes or yes? Yes or yes? Yes. Okay, now it says here that we can separate insoluble solids from a liquid by pouring out the liquid. That's how we separate insoluble solids. Just, just like this one, look at the picture. Or look at the GIF. What is he doing? He's just separating the solid with his hands with by just pouring it, right? Okay, next one we have here. We can use a filtration to separate small insoluble solids from a liquid or gas. This one is a filter. You can use filtration to separate small insoluble solid, solid from a liquid or gas. Next one we have here. When the mixture is passed through a filter paper, the solids are trapped by the filter paper while liquid flows through. Look at this model. Uh, um, I think teacher Layla made this before. Can you remember? I think teacher Layla made this model before during our academic day. Can you still remember it? No. Oh, yes. Yes, that's a filtration oh, method. As you can see, we have here the filter paper. We have here the solid material. When you pour it, the, the paper will filter the dust or dirt from this material. Okay. Next one, we have sewage treatment. Sewage treatment plants use filter to remove harmful substances in wastewater before the water is released into a river. Okay, this one is the sewage treatment, which is it filters the dirty water before it releases into a river or into a dam. That's what we call sewage treatment. Okay, it filters the harmful substances in wastewater before it releases into river or dam. Next one we have here. What's this? What's this? Surgical mask. Surgical mask. Surgical mask. Can you please read? Can you please read mm -hmm. it? Come on, read it. Oh, I will call someone to read it. Um. Mm, Shamawi. Chamawe, can you please read? Oh. Okay. Yeah. Surgical mat as as filter keeping the particle out while letting air to pass through. To pass through. Okay. Do you agree with this one? That surgical mask as a, act as a filter. Yes or no? Did you agree that surgical mask as, act as a filter? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, surgical mask as, act as a filter, as it filter the dust particles while letting the air pass through. That's why uh, these days we are wearing mask, right? Yes, we have to wear masks these days because of the COVID situation, right? Why do you think we are wearing masks? Why do you think we are wearing masks right now? Yes. 
Because what? Because coronavirus. Okay, because we might breathe the air that contains viruses. Okay, that's why we are wearing masks these days. All right, now we have also here, when brewing coffee, hot water is passed through coffee powder and a filter. The filter traps the coffee powder while allowing the coffee solution to pass through. Okay, do you agree that fil filtration method is done with this process? Yes or no? Do you have this at home? Who have this at home? I don't have this at home. Oh, I, me too. I don't have it as well. Just look at the picture. As you can see, the coffee here is put there and it filters the coffee. Only the liquid pours down into the pitcher. Okay. Next one, we have here a video. Did you watch this video already? Okay, this video contains different filtration method. Now I want you to watch it. I will ask you one by one later, okay? I will ask you about your observations. Watch it properly, okay? Yes or yes? <laughs> okay. Access to fresh water is one of the largest drivers of creating a modern society. But what allows everyone access to seemingly endless supplies of potable water? It depends on where you live, but chances are behind your tap, there's a municipal water treatment plant. There are two main types of water treatment plants, drinking water or wastewater plants. We'll be focusing in on drinking water plants here, but if you'd like to learn about how wastewater is treated, you can watch the video link in the upper right. The question still remains, how exactly does one treatment plant take dirty river water or well water and turn it into water that is safe to drink? It involves a lot of processing, using chemicals, filters, and removing all of the toxins and hazards from a given source. The entire process starts with something called coagulation and flocculation. All drinking water has to come from water, usually being freshwater lakes, rivers, wells, or streams. In these water sources, there's going to be some amount of sediment as well as organic materials in the water. These particles of sand, bacteria, dirt, wood, etc., they all have to be removed before the water can be sent out to city residents. To do this, chemicals called coagulants are added to the water. These chemicals, such as aluminum sulfate or ferric chloride, work to help the particles in the water congeal together. Essentially, these chemicals have the opposite charges of suspended solids, like or silts. When combined, the charges of the particles are neutralized, allowing for them to stick together. Coagulants are often added to the water right at the inlet of a drinking water plant, where the water then goes into mixing basins called flocculation basins. In these basins, the solution of water and coagulants will slowly mix together to form what are called flock particles. After mixing for a set amount of time determined by water quality in the flocculation basins, the water is moved to sedimentation basins. It's in these holding tanks where the water sits for the flock particles to begin settling out at a faster and faster rate, which is the intended goal of this process. By simply adding and mixing these chemicals into the water and letting that water sit, a large portion of the sediment will settle out to the bottom as sludge, which could be taken away to a landfill or holding facility. The flock particles are ultimately removed from the bottom of basins and the clean water being is at the top due to the settling particles flows over weirs to the next stage of the process. In some plants, engineers actually use dissolved air flotation tanks in place of sedimentation basins. In these cases, air is pumped into the bottom of the tanks, creating a cascade of tiny bubbles. As these bubbles float to the surface, they take flock particles with them, forming a film of flock on the surface of the tanks. Then a scooper arm pushes the flock into the collection basin, where it's taken to the handle. All the air flotation tanks, the clean water is taken from the bottom where the least amount of flock is. When it comes to designing wastewater treatment plants, engineers will vary techniques based on the water source and how they want their final water to taste, feel, or otherwise be treated. The only regulation is the quality of water being pumped into the city, and in most cases, it doesn't matter how plants get the water to that point, which allows civil engineers a lot of creative freedom.
the process. After the majority of solids are removed from the water during coagulation and inoculation, followed by sedimentation, the water flows over here to the next step, filtration. The water at this point will start looking clear, but there will still be bacteria and very small suspended solids in the mix. The filtration process will seek to remove the remainder of the suspended solids and bacteria to further bring the water up to stuff. Nearly every potable water treatment plant will use a sand filter for this process. Even in plants where engineers may not think it's needed, often sand filters will be added simply for extra measures to ensure clean water at the end. Sand filters are exactly what they sound like, a basin of fine to coarse sand that filters water. It would theoretically be possible to treat drinking water with only sand filters, but that would result in frequently clogged sand filters, resulting in lower efficiency and more cleaning time. These sand filters can be set up in essentially two different ways. Either the water flows from the bottom and exits the top, or the water flows from the top and exits the bottom. Each layout presents its own set of unique problems, but the most common technique is actually for the water to flow from the bottom to the top. Sand filters aren't highly technical. Water just passes through them and particles get caught as they run out of space to flow through. However, while not highly technical, sand filters are highly efficient. Water flowing out of sand filters will need to have a clarity of around less than 0.3 nephilometric turbidity units, or NTU. Try saying that three times fast. Or whatever local code is used for water clarity. This measurement is essentially just a way to determine the number of particles still remaining in the water, or turbidity. Many treatment plants will also pass water through activated carbon basins, which you can essentially think of as giant filter tanks. Activated carbon particles have hundreds of tiny pores on them that help remove the tiniest of sediment, bacteria. This process isn't wholly necessary, but it helps improve taste and odor, often a desired trait for city residents. At this point, the water should be mostly crystal clear, but there still remains some residual bacteria. That leads us to the next step, disinfection. There are three main ways of disinfection in the water treatment process, which can be used individually or in combination with one another, depending upon design. First, chlorine or chloramine treatment, there's ozone treatment, and finally, ultraviolet radiation treatment. In the U.S., the main method of disinfection is by adding chloramines or chlorine-based compounds. These compounds, such as chlorine dioxide or monochloramine, work to kill microorganisms. One downside to this process, though, is that these chemicals can react with other organic material in the water to create disinfection byproducts. These disinfection byproducts are harmful to human health and have to be prevented or mitigated. This extraneous reaction with other organic material is also why chlorine disinfection must come at the end of the treatment process. If added at the beginning, an abundance of disinfection byproducts would be created, causing a plethora of issues for the engineers and plant operators. Even with all of this, chlorine is used mainly because of how it kills pathogens. It not only kills any pathogens in the water at the plant, but residual chlorine levels also remain in the tap water, killing any contaminants that might get introduced after leaving the plant. Most cities or states will have maximum or minimum chlorine levels in the treated water in order to keep both the water treated and city residents safe. The other most common method of treatment is ultraviolet radiation. In this process, UV light is shined through the water, which scrambles any bacterial DNA. This doesn't kill the bacteria, but it makes it impossible for them to reproduce, thus making them harmless. The main downside to this disinfection process is that it isn't residual like the chlorine, meaning that any bacteria introduced to the water after this process can't be treated. Finally, we're left with ozone treatment. This process involves adding ozone, O3, to the water. Called ozonation, the ozone kills the bacteria in the water as well as improving the taste and odor. In most cases, this treatment process also requires that a chemical be used to remove any ozone at the end, such as sodium bisulfate, as not to cause any harmful effects to the city's population or anyone who might drink the water. After the water is treated, in any one of these three disinfection processes, it's ready to be pumped into the city's pipe network for delivery and taken back. The water flowing out of a plant is tested for various levels of chemicals, particles, and other qualities all outlined in a plant's permit. This permit, set by the governing agency, regulates water quality and holds the treatment plant accountable in the treatment process. At this point, all the water is fit for human consumption per the permit in the treatment plant is tasked with keeping 
Canadian flow into the pipes or city. Constant pressures of 40 psi must be kept at the outlets of the water in the system so that in areas of high elevation in the pipe network, the water retains residual pressure. One foot in water elevation is directly correlated to an increase or decrease of 0.4 psi. So as water is pumped throughout the city, its pressure at any given point of differing elevation fluctuates. Positive pressure always has to be achieved as to not let any external water in the ground flow through pipe cracks or joints. This would contaminate the entire system and is one reason why you might experience a boil water notice. Essentially, that means engineers have a reason to believe that somewhere in that city's pipe network dropped below the required PSI and water or contaminants might have infiltrated the system. Massive pumps at the treatment plant supply pressure to the system through constant operation. Some of this pressure can be stored as an elevation water towers, which can give pumps a backup in emergencies for fire flows. In a lot of cases, water towers allow the pumps in the treatment plant to run at a constant rate, which increases efficiency and removes downtime problems. This combination of pumps and water towers allows your tap to remain flowing and otherwise allows you to live in the comfort of your own home. Civil engineers and treatment plant operators work around the clock to provide clean water through water treatment plants. At this point, we've taken a look at the most common potable water treatment techniques, but there are tens to hundreds of other deviations we haven't discussed. This draws back to one of the coolest things about water treatment plant design. You're able to use any number of creative solutions to clean the water, and as long as it comes out clean, you've done your job well. Don't forget about the thankless job of being a water treatment plant operator, though. These men and women work around the clock to keep treatment plants running 24-7 so you can always have fresh water. A lot of time, money, and effort goes into making sure that you can have that nice glass of water on your hand. Okay, what are the things you notice or what are the things you remember about the video you just watched? Anything? It's all about what? What is all about the video? Oh, did you watch or did you just listen to it? Did you understand the video? Hmm? Did you understand the video? <laughs> yes or no? Nipitch. Nipitch. Hi, Nipitch. What are the things? What are the things you understand or you notice about the video? It's all about what? It's all about what? It's all about what? I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Can you please repeat it? It's all about what? <laughs> oh, I think you did not understand the video. Okay, the video is all about water filtration, how how machines how machines filter the water we are drinking, and as you as you can see, as you saw earlier, there are lots of process before we actually can drink water, right? It undergoes so many processes like coagulation and many more. Okay, now this, this Zoom meeting will be posted on YouTube. If you don't understand the video earlier, you can just watch it again for more information. And before you answer your activity on word wall, let me just review you again. What is insoluble solid again? What is insoluble solid, Bunya Chai? Yeah, very good. I'm glad that you remember it. Now, can someone give me an example of insoluble solid? Can someone give me an example of insoluble solid? I have mentioned this one earlier. What are some examples of insoluble solid? We have sand. Fats, wood, metals, plastic, oils, and many more. As long as the material or the object does not dissolve into water, it is an insoluble solid. Okay? Yes or no? 
Now, can you give me an example of a mixture before you answer your word wall activity? What is what are some examples of mixture? Just the things we can mix together. Come on, you can give me anything that's in your mind. What is that? What are some examples of a mixture? Oh. Water and tea leaves. Huh? Water and tea leaves. Water and what? Sorry. Water and tea leaves. Water and tea. Very good. What else? How about when we mix sand, water, and gravel together? What will happen? What object will form? Water, sand, and gravel. When we mix them together, what object will form? Do you have any idea? It will become cement, right? That's an example of a mixture. How about when we mix flour, milk, and eggs? What will happen? We can make a pancake. Okay. Pancakes, right? Okay, that is an example of a mixture. Now, do you have any question about the topic today? Do you have any question? Before you answer your word wall, do you have any clarifications? Yes or no? Hey, you answer teacher. Do you have any questions or clarifications? No. No more? Okay, now this word wall is made by teacher John. This is made by teacher John. I will copy it and paste it into Zoom chat. Now you have to go to the link and answer it, okay? Yes? Okay. All right. Okay, I'll give you time to answer that one. Teacher John will check it later. Can you see it? No. Oh, it's in Zoom chat. I already ch I already sent it to Z to our Zoom chat. Can you see it? No. No, oh, I cannot see it. It's Open the screen. Zoom chat. Wait. Let me just send it again. This one is the link. Open the Zoom chat. Yes, I open now. Okay. Can you see the link I just sent? No. Really? No. Oh, wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. Please, can you send it to your friend? Oh, wait, let me just send it again because I said it as a direct message earlier. Okay, can you oh, see, I can now? see now? I can see now. Okay, <laughs> now you have to go to the link. Enter your English name. Please, English name only, not Thai name because we cannot read Thai, okay? Just your English name. Go to the link and okay. play your word wall activity. It is recorded. It will be recorded by Teacher Jan later as your quiz, I think. Okay. Okay, teacher. Okay, I'll give you okay. 10 minutes. Is that okay? 10 minutes? Or five? Okay. Okay, faster. <laughs> 10, 10. Tell me or give me a heads up if you're finished. Like, teacher, I'm finished. So I can count how many people played the game, okay? Again, give me a heads up if you finish it. Say, teacher, I'm finished. So I can count the people who played the game. Teacher, yeah, finish. Finish. Okay, who's that? Your name? Kirapo. Kirapo. Okay, very good. How many correct answers did you get? Only Tirapo, Tirapo finished the game. Only one. 
How about the others? Are you playing? Chanticha, Ombria, Chantaja, Tanchacha. No, sorry. I'm not familiar with your names because I usually handle P1, P2, and P3. Give me a heads up once you're finished, okay? I finish. Finish. Okay, who's that? What's your What's your name? Bunya Chai. Oh, Bunya Chai. Very good. Can you see the leaderboard? Bunya Chai, can you see the leaderboard? Yes or no? No. No. Oh, no, you cannot see the leaderboard. Oh, it's okay. I will just ask Teacher Jan about this one. Teacher, I finish. Finish. What's your name? Huh? Okay. Anyway, the children will see it on his record. Okay. Everyone's finished? Yeah. Who, who's not finished yet? I think. Who's not finished yet? Okay. Do you have any questions or clarifications about the lesson? No. No more? Did you learn something today? Did you learn something today? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, now I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Thank you for listening to me. Anyway, for your next meeting, Teacher John will be with you again. Today, he cannot be with you because he's fixing oh, something. Okay? Goodbye, everyone. Again, I am Teacher April, your teacher Thank for you. today. Thank you, 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 Bye, bye, guys. See you soon. Yeah, and please yeah, keep yeah, safe, yeah, okay? Yeah, Always yeah, wear your yeah. mask whenever you go outside. And of yeah, course, yeah, you have to practice yeah, washing your hands yeah. every time. Goodbye, yeah. everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. See you all soon, yeah. okay? Keep safe. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, I cannot end the meeting. <laughs>